A Dance on the Edge, The Gilgamesh Signal, by Timothy R. Senna. Potential, Earth, January 11th, 2020. Noe Utnapishtim, the Department of Defense is pleased to offer you the position of Senior Systems Development Engineer under contract, pending the results of our ongoing security clearance screening and background monitoring. The details of this offer are highly confidential and should be disposed of properly pursuant to DOD rules and regulations. Report for duty on... Holy mother of fucks! Noe shouted, his hands trembling, still somewhat in disbelief as he read the words on the paper. The letter went on to cover reporting details, along with an afterthought mentioning that employment may be terminated contingent on any findings. Let's see. Further warnings of death or imprisonment if information is leaked. Ooh, a sign-on bonus. That's pretty low, considering I'll have to live in the desert again and keep my work a secret. But still, it's the opportunity of a lifetime, Noe thought excitedly. Noe Utnapishtim had lived a tumultuous life up until recently, when he had finally started to explore the world outside the safety of his mother's home by moving to Oregon. He had always found an escape from the harsh, ugly truths of reality through online forums, and had spent hours coding and hacking into the video games he played just to see what he could get away with. In truth, Noe had perhaps relied too much on this familiar virtual territory as an escape and he had remained socially withdrawn from childhood to the present. Noe had grown up in a relatively boring little town in the high desert of New Mexico called Alamogordo. Most of his best childhood memories consisted of exploring the desert plants and animals with his father outdoors or looking at the sky with his mother. Mother had always been too busy on her computer or away at work to really spend any time with him before his father had gone off the deep end. For much of his school life, Noe had been either ignored or teased, and he greatly preferred being teased. At least then, the others had noticed him. All his life, Noe had found himself worrying constantly about everything. Noe had been ten years old when he finally punched his father for the first time. He remembered the bloodshot, yellowed eyes filled with insane rage, with the stink of cheap whiskey and piss-stained denim in the air, and the sound of mother gasping for air on the rug behind the couch, having been choked nearly to death by the man she had once loved. That man, who had once smiled, and carried him on his shoulders as he played at the beach under a billion glittering jewels in the sky. That man had died that year in another desert far away. What had come back was a demon. When Noe was five, his father, Specialist Salomon Miklan, was deployed to combat in the Gulf War as a Chaparral Missile Systems Technician in the U.S. Army. He had talked about undergoing abuse in boot camp. That alone had undoubtedly damaged his mind and body to some degree. But the resilience which had served Specialist Miklan in combat had been shattered by some unspeakable horror that he had never come to terms with. In spite of his recent legal troubles, or maybe because of them, a new door had opened up before him, leading to limitless potential. It had been over a year since Noe had submitted a packet of code and a letter in which he claimed to have programmed a skeleton key application capable of cracking the Pentagon's encrypted server firewalls within minutes. After the DoD cyber warfare teams were able to run a trial of the code on an isolated clone of the defense net, they discovered that the claims were vastly understated. It had only been a matter of time before he was arrested at his home by Homeland Security agents for the crime of threatening national security. Terrified, Noe had no choice but to comply, and he was taken to the local police station, 
where the agents kept him under armed supervision. Isn't this a little excessive? I don't pose any kind of physical threat, don't you think? Noe pleaded. One of the agents scoffed. You think we want to be stuck in here with some greasy internet troll? Unfortunately, we have orders, so we're going to be spending quite a bit of time together, knowing how the FBI guys work. Noe had spent his evening in a holding cell across from a junkie who had been rocking back and forth on his bunk, clearly suffering withdrawals. Uh, hey, I never got my phone call. I'd really like to call my mother. The agent cut him off. Fuck off. You're practically a domestic terrorist. Your rights are void at the moment. This shook Noe badly. Was this what it was like to be stripped of your rights and be labeled an enemy of the state? He had begun to feel paranoid, struck with the terror that he could stay in prison for the rest of his life, condemned and forgotten. He took hyperventilating breaths in a flailing attempt at gaining control as his reality began spiraling into a wave of panic. Just then, the buzzer sounded, and a Homeland Security agent walked in, smiling as he held the door open for two men, dressed stereotypically like men in black. At this point, Noe was exhausted and irritable. Are you going to take your glasses off? You're inside. And I demand my one phone call. What about the Constitution? I have rights. Noe's voice had cracked embarrassingly as he accosted the mysterious men. You're coming with us. I'm Special Agent Io, and this is Special Agent Triton, CIA. We have a couple of questions for you and a proposition to make. The taller agent croaked in the gravelly voice of a longtime smoker. Come along, then. The shorter agent, Triton, piped in with a comically higher-pitched voice, easing Noe's feelings of intimidation somewhat. In the twilight hours before sunrise, Io and Triton had taken Noe to a black Lincoln Navigator with pitch-dark windows after they had checked him out of holding. Triton had to tiptoe slightly as he opened the back doors of the vehicle, waving his arm invitingly. Nervously, Noe hopped into the vehicle, and the agents settled into the front seats. Here's your phone, Triton said as he passed it over his shoulder to Noe with a smirk. Noticing his puzzled look, he adds, Oh, it's a total brick. It certainly isn't like we trust you. We're in a moving Faraday cage of sorts. You know what that is? Basically, any tech that we aren't personally controlling is totally cut off from the outside of this vehicle. It'll work fine later. Don't sweat it. Noe had noticed Triton's toes just barely reached the floorboard and chuckled. Triton's re reflection in the rearview mirror raised a suspicious eyebrow at Noe. His attempt to conceal the laugh had clearly failed, but Special Agent Triton continued to speak without acknowledging it. Now, that little stunt you pulled was pretty ballsy, kid. Totally stupid. But you're lucky the intel community can see the difference between a threat and a tech demo. You're lucky you never ran the application yourself. You had to be pretty damn confident to submit this without being able to test it first. Now, to cut to the chase, we're offering you total expungement of all criminal records along with a full-time salaried contract with federal benefits, pending a ridiculously deep background check, of course. Security will be provided to your family, and you'll be able to live a relatively normal life whenever you're off base outside of your work on the project. A hologram appeared before Noe, displaying text files and graphics as a visual aid to the presentation. Special Agent Triton sat in the passenger seat, gesturing in the air with his index finger as Io spoke and remained focused on the road. It was clear to Noe that the hand gestures were manipulating the holograms. You'd think this thing would have autopilot with all the bells and whistles, Noe scoffed. Io laughed. <laughs> it does have autopilot, actually. It's just that I'm an analog kind of guy. Always will be. Not like you. And that's precisely why you were chosen. 
We need that egghead of yours for a special job in advanced programming. Programming? Just what kind of program are we talking about? Noe asked, unable to conceal his intrigue. The quantum sentient kind, bucko. I know it sounds crazy, but you've got real potential. Triton's eyes could be seen widening in the rearview mirror as he briefly made eye, eye contact with Noe, emphasizing the statement. Smirking at Noe's obvious, impatient curiosity, Io continued. Are you familiar with AI, Mr... Uh, nah, wait, what's the file say? Uh, sorry. I'll just go with Noe. It seems strange to hear a tone of embarrassment in Io's deep, rough voice. A hologram of the human brain appeared and then segmented into its major component parts. It was accompanied by an overlay displaying advanced program maps. Noe immediately recognized the structure. It was like a neural schematic, interpreting the human body's own computer system into a virtual equivalent. It was January 2020 when Noe finally received the formal letter confirming his contract and his work was to begin that same month. But that year held a number of surprises for Noe and the rest of the world. By February, the world had been struck by a global pandemic caused by a strain of novel coronavirus called COVID-19, which had managed to bring travel and the global economy to its knees amid massive social unrest centered around racial and policing conflict in the United States of America. To make matters worse, Noe had been suffering from a near-constant, mild cough. This had not served to make him popular among his new colleagues at S4 in the Nevada desert. He had enough trouble socializing and making friends without the added stigma of a respiratory syndrome during a global pandemic. His early sense of awe at having witnessed glimpses of prototypical vehicles and Inexplicable visual phenomena in the various hangar bays of S-4 was an unfortunately brief honeymoon period. The morning of his second day, he attended orientation into his new role when he had received a briefing packet on the project he'd been assigned to. Just as he was about to open the folder, an announcement rang out over the PA system. Noi, Dutna, Piss them? <clears throat> Noi you. Report to Annex C-719 to speak with Senior Director Shepard immediately. This is a direct order. Noe had been summoned to see Abraham Shepard, the Senior Director of the Software and Systems Branch in S-4's top-secret R&D wing. Immediately upon hearing the order to report over the PA system, Noe was filled with a sense of dread as reality melted away around him. He found himself looking through the eyes of a child again, standing in front of his towering father, drunk, growling maliciously. You either come to me, or I come over there and whip your ass ten times harder. Noe's colleague, Radha Prifthi, snapped her fingers in front of his face. <coughs> uh, you all right there, Noe? Snapping back to reality, Noe tried to slow his breathing, hoping Rada hadn't noticed the sweat trickling down his forehead. Sorry, I kinda, you know, zone out sometimes, Noe offered sheepishly. Rada tried to reassure him. Relax, you aren't being called to the principal's office. The director's a real dick when it comes to deadlines and productivity, but he'll always go to bat for us if we need funding or whenever the higher-ups start meddling in our work. He's actually a really good guy to have on your side, but he's even better at holding a grudge, so you'd want to avoid that, if at all possible. Rada flashed a dazzling smile as she laughed. <laughs> you look positively terrified now. I guess I just made things worse, huh? Look, don't sweat it. I'm sure Shepard just wants to meet his newest tech working on the quantum... Uh, I mean, you're not clear to hear about the project just yet. Uh, we'll talk in more detail later. Well, you'd better get a move on. You know, Shepard actually timed it. 
It takes 15 minutes to walk from the farthest points in S4 to his office. That's at a brisk pace, as he likes to say. You have about 10 minutes left before he brands you as unreliable for life. Now head down that hall to the end, then take a left and continue until you see the annex sign. And for God's sake, don't forget to knock. Thank you for listening to A Dance on the Edge, The Gilgamesh Signal, Chapter 1, Potential, by Timothy R. Senna. I will be releasing the first few chapters of the book as a free audio sample. Hoping you'll enjoy this, and consider purchasing the book on Amazon or Kindle. It's available in paperback or hardcover, and the links can be found in the description. Thank you.